I upload daily NBA videos on this channel, so if that is something that interests you, then subscribe. Also drop a like on this video. It only takes one second and it makes a massive difference. Today, I wanted to talk about the Chicago Bulls as I really want to all the time, but I have to kind of limit it because I don't want to overwhelm people with Bulls talk because most people don't care about the Chicago Bulls. I'm fully aware of that. I wanted to talk about them because they have been really interesting the past couple of games. Their record over the last five, I think is four and one. Uh, it might be three three and one it might but it, it was bad but at the same time they looked a whole lot better excluding one game so the chicago bulls have been very confusing to me the title is the title of this video is the chicago bulls are confusing or i'm confused by the chicago Bulls," something like that and it's because they have looked so much better than they did to start the year and yet they still haven't really been winning games that they probably should have been. The biggest game of note really comes with the OKC Thunder, where the Bulls were up 10, around 10, with one minute left in the game, and they somehow lost because they literally could not throw a pass without it being a turnover, and they could not defend them on the other end. Lou Dort turned into Ray Allen, and Gary Payton at the same time. He had like six steals and he had like six threes. He could not miss from outside. And his defense, like every pass they tried to make, the passing lane was covered. And they got a steal and they got another possession. And for that reason, the Bulls ended up blowing that lead to the OKC Thunder and it was the biggest collapse of the season thus far. It was pretty damn pathetic. And I was very furious at the time. I almost made a re reaction video to it, but I decided to leave that one alone and kind of wait and gather my thoughts because while I was very mad at that collapse, I also was kind of the opinion that OKC just played at such a ridiculously good level that even with those mistakes, 99% of the time, you're still going to walk away with the W. But OKC played so well that it was like, okay, I know they could have done better there, but most of the time, regardless, that still results in a W because, like, Lou Dort not missing a three, uh, Shea Godis Alexander getting to the basket. What was annoying is on that last and one play for Shea that got them into overtime. For some reason, the coach, what the fuck is his name? He's the coach of my team. Why can I not remember it? Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan subbed out Wendell Carter Jr., who is a rim protector, and put Lowry Markkinen at the five, and I believe either Patrick Williams or Thaddeus Young at the four. And for that reason, the paint was like way easier to go into. And then Shea gets an and one out of it. Like I genuinely believe if he doesn't make that substitution, the Bulls win that OKC game because Shea was not going to get an easy ass and one layup in that situation because Wendell would have gotten the way of that. Small ball five Lowry is not something that I approve of, especially when you're trying to get a stop on a team that can't miss. Then on the opposite end of the spectrum for the Chicago Bulls, a few games before that, we played the Portland Trailblazers and they went up by 20 at around halftime because Damian Lillard could not miss a shot and it looked like that game was going to be over and then towards the second half they just made the comeback and they ended the game with Zach Levine hitting a dagger three from like five feet behind the three-point line and that gave them a win over Portland in a game where they were down 20 and I believe this is the only 20 point deficit that was recovered from at least at that point the entire season it might have happened since then but the Bulls have one of the worst collapses in the NBA and the, a 10 point lead blown in one minute. But then on the opposite end of the spectrum, they come back from down 20 and end up winning a game. So how fucking good is this team? I can't tell. Because also after that Portland game, they played the Clippers and the Lakers. Uh, I don't believe the Lakers had Anthony Davis in that game, but the Clippers had both Kawhi and PG and they were pretty much healthy across the board. And the Lakers still had LeBron James. They had role players that were doing pretty well in that game. I know that Dennis Schroeder was, had a good game. I don't know what his exact stats were, but I could tell that he was playing well. And then both of those games were very close. Like a couple of possessions could have made those go the other way. And those are two of the best teams in the league. I know people like to clown on the Clippers, but they've been very good this year. And the Bulls very nearly beat them. The Lakers, I understand no AD, but that's still a good team without him. And the Bulls 
almost won that game. So we very well could be looking at a situation where the Bulls are like seven and eight right now. And really, if they didn't blow that game versus OKC, they could be eight and seven. That's awesome. Like yesterday, just beat the Dallas Mavericks, who they were missing some role players. But when we played them earlier in the year and they only and they didn't have Luka or KP, we barely beat them yesterday. They had Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis, and I have to stop saying we, and the Bulls beat them rather handily. There was times where a lead was kind of getting blown, but Luka had 30 points at the half, and we won that game. He had six, I believe, in the second half, but still, a guy had a 30-point triple-double by like halfway through the third quarter, and the Bulls had to control the game the whole time. That's awesome. I mean, they also held the team in general to just 101 points, which is the lowest for us this year. Not us. I'm not a member of the Chicago Bulls. Why is that a habit that exists? They took care of business versus the Dallas Mavericks and looked like a good team again after really struggling versus OKC and blowing that game. It's also, another weird thing about that is that Zach Levine and Kobe White did not have a good game in that one. They both shot poor. They didn't shoot the ball a whole lot either. Uh, there was a bit more playmaking coming from them, but they overall had, I'd say, a bad game for the both of them. And the Bulls won this game because the Bulls bench scored like 50 points. And Garrett Temple had, I think, 19 points. Uh, he had 17 in the first half. Uh, that was so weird. Otto Porter Jr. had a big game. He was hitting a bunch of shots in the fourth quarter. Thaddeus Young was great. This whole Bulls team has been very weird, especially with the role players on top of everything else, because Garrett Temple, Thad Young, and Otto Porter Jr. have been very heavily relied on for this team, and especially in the later game moments for when they're trying to win games, and it has worked almost every time. Like, why did we get Garrett Temple for $5 million? Because this guy has been awesome for this team. I just said we again. Fuck me. Uh, Garrett Temple has been amazing. He's been hitting his threes and playing good defense, and he's just a great leader. And this is a team that was in need of some leadership in the locker room outside of a coach, so that's good to see. And then Thad Young. I don't know if I've seen that guy miss a hook shot slash floater with his left hand. Like, period. He gets them in the lane all the time, and he makes it every single time. Uh, he's also just been amazing defensively. They've been using him as a small ball center at times, and it's been working out. And then Otto Porter Jr., his numbers probably haven't been all that amazing, but I can tell you right now that he's played a whole lot better than he did in the limited limited time that he played last year because of injury. He just looks like a whole new player, and the player that contributed to the Bulls being 500 back in that February in 2018 or 2019, I think it was 2018, where I think it actually was 2019, I believe. I don't fucking know. One of the Februaries, uh, it, the Bulls looked amazing, and it was because they traded for Otto Porter Jr., and he's looked like that Otto Porter Jr. again, which is awesome. Unfortunately, it could be partly because he's on a one-year contract and he's just going to leave after this year, but the point is the Bulls' role players have really been doing well. Then for the Bulls' like core players, Lowry Markkinen has been good for the most part. Uh, Wendell Carter has ended up being amazing after a rough start for the first two games in the preseason. He has been the Bulls' best young prospect, as I have said before. Kobe White has taken a step in the playmaking department, but it's still very clearly not his natural thing. I think he's averaging like six assists per game. But uh, I can tell that he's far more comfortable when he's trying to score the ball. Speaking of that, he's averaging around 18 points on good efficiency. Zach Levine, I don't know what his stats are now because he had like four points last game or something like that. Now he actually had like 10, I think, because he got to the line a good bit. Zach Levine averaged 28 points before this game. I don't know what it is now, but... He has been amazing. It was also on like 60 plus percent true shooting. So he's just been really good to open this year. Uh, they've also had Thomas Sadoransky out due to, I think he was exposed to the virus and then Chandler Hutchinson for the same reason. Hutch is a very good backup defender that they have. And then Sadoransky is like the only true playmaker on this team. Unfortunately, he can't really dribble. So it's like hard to mix that in. The point is this team has not been bad, but yet their record is five and eight. So I think a lot of these games have been close. A couple of them, they, especially the OKC game, they shouldn't have lost, and then they just did. But for the most part, this Bulls team has looked a whole lot better. And for the casual NBA fan who's not watching the Bulls, which is completely understandable, uh, they're probably not going to look at this team and think they've improved all that much. But I can tell you right now, if you're actually watching these games, and I've watched all but like two of them, they have drastically improved as a team i still don't know how high the ceiling for this team is i still think you know they could be a playoff team far from a guarantee but they have been good 
and especially with teams in the east being really disappointing like the hawks the raptors and the wizards i think the window for actually being a playoff team has increased by a decent amount so it's definitely really possible and if i was going to bet on it if they continue to be the consistently solid product that they have been outside of that okc game really and the poor start to the year if they can just be what they have been for the past five games outside of the okc game that's a team that can make the playoffs in the eastern conference i'm not going to say that they will because the bulls in the past have shown flashes of being good and then they just didn't but if this is not just a flash then i do believe this can be a playoff team in the eastern conference which is amazing to say because i've been waiting for this team to show signs of competency i opened up this year by making a video called i hate being a bulls fan because we gave up 83 points at the half i said we again that's not been the case anymore i mean they still haven't been good defensively but offensively they're like the middle of the pack in the past couple of years they've been bad at offense and pretty all right at defense but now we're like i got to stop saying we dude they're at least okay at offense and then the defense has been not as good as it was in the past but they've been winning games better they've looked like a more uh, a more competent nba team and i'm just glad to see it but they're also not sitting great in the record department right now so a little bit confused but i think it's just been a matter of a couple of mistakes that led to games being lost that shouldn't have been lost and the bulls could very well be 500 right now if for not a few of those circumstances but uh that is why i am confused about the bulls but also pretty damn optimistic because they have definitely been better as of late shout out to rudy for editing this video and that is the end of this video please be sure to like and subscribe for more nba content like this and keep the outro music